Social incompleteness is often a term used very glibly, and most people, if you ask them, wouldn't understand what it really meant, although you probably find some EDA companies claiming that they have a tool which does it. So what I'm going to do in this short video is explain what is meant by social incompleteness, what would it look like if it was presented to us, and is it actually realistic given today's technologies. We will go through an example of a design showing what is meant by completeness, what tools can report for us to give us some idea of how complete we are, and understanding what the term incompleteness means. Clearly our intention will be to define sufficient properties as identified in the verification plan to verify our design. But how do we know that we've covered everything that we need to cover in terms of functionality? This is what's known as the completeness problem. And this isn't something that is created by SVA or the use of formal. This exists in any kind of verification. If we've been doing a constrained random coverage driven simulation, how do we know we specified enough coverage? Tool metrics might tell you that you don't have enough assertions, but that's not the same thing as knowing that you have. And we will discuss that later. Inferring that you don't have enough assertions isn't the same thing as knowing you have enough. There is no way really of telling that you've written enough properties to cover all functionality that should be covered. Just in the same way that code coverage in a simulation doesn't tell us that we've got complete functional coverage. Shown in the circuit diagram there is the actual design that we wish for. So this will be defined in a functional spec. The symbols used are the Boolean gate symbols. So clearly what we would do once the design was implemented in RTL, we would write some properties that was intended to check all the behavior required by that design. However, we might make mistakes doing this because we're only human after all. So if we were to go and write these properties here, we can see that the first one says, if I have A or B, this implies the next cycle OP1 should be true. And again, we might think, well, that seems a sensible thing to write. However, in the next property, whether it be an oversight or copy paste error, we've made a mistake. The property says, if not A and not B, this implies that OP2 is true the next cycle. Unluckily for us, what will happen is that assertion will always pass. Even though, if we look at the inputs to the design, A cannot affect the output OP2. But if we look at the truth table to the left, it just so happens that any operation of that circuit will mean that property will pass. So clearly, this is not a good news, because we'd never know. We've made a mistake and we'd never know. Another kind of problem is we've got this assertion P3. And what it says is, if not C is true, then AP1 will be true the next cycle. But OP3 could be tied up to the power rail, and we'd never know. And so we have to ask ourselves, did we specify all the properties we wanted to, to check that we had exactly that circuit shown? Simulators do not have any capability to tell us what we wish to know, which is, did we write enough properties for our design? Formal verification tools, however, do have some measure of this. What they can report is that all of the following are included in the cone of influence of some assertion. All IOs, all flip-flops. Formal can also check there's no dead code, meaning lines of code that can never execute. It can also check that all assertions always pass under all circumstances. And there is always a way of demonstrating a cover passing. So should we conclude verifications complete if all of those give positive indications? Well, there's still no way of knowing that you specified enough properties to check all functionality. So human error or oversight can escape detection in the verification process. So the tool metrics we've described will tell you when you have not finished. So you know for sure you haven't finished yet. But that's not the same thing as knowing that you've written enough. So the report you get is incompleteness, not completeness. Completeness is a holy grail in verification. Essentially, what you'd like is something to understand what your functional specs say and then make sure the implementation of the design meets all those requirements. Here's the previous design that has been modified slightly from the intended behavior. This is known as what's called a mutant of the design. So it's similar to the design, but it's been changed in some way. If we were to look at the truth table here, what we can see on the left is the boxes in red, or the values in red, should I say, have changed from the previous definition. So this truth table is slightly different from the previous one. 
So it is different behaviour, and we should know that already because it's a different circuit. However, all of our properties still pass. So we didn't capture a property set that defines completely the intended and desired behaviour. So now that we know the nature of the problem, the next question is, can we achieve completeness in any way? And unfortunately, the answer is no, because at the moment, there doesn't seem to be any technology that can understand the design specification well enough to automatically interpret that and then produce a set of verification properties. However, we can get closer using the tool features that we discussed. No tools can tell you you have an entirely complete property set. For the foreseeable future, there is no substitute for understanding what your requirements are, intelligent planning, attention to every detail, and hard work. However, it's not all bad news. Clearly, ICs are still being designed and manufactured, and most of them work. And the reason for this is because people pursue the coverage-driven and metric-driven methodologies, which tell us that we verified everything that we said we were going to verify. So it's about knowing you've executed everything you said you were going to execute. This is something you can know. So whether you're using dynamic, that's simulation, or you're using formal verification, we have the same objectives. We want to make sure all checks pass in the context of full coverage being collected. So in simulation, checks are the assertions. So we need to see all assertions and other scoreboard checks and other kinds of things pass in the context of having complete coverage. Informal, we want to see all assertions pass in the context of all your coverage statements passing. So basically, even though the technologies are radically different, our requirements for verification, execution, completeness are exactly the same. And that is the best methodology that anyone has found so far. So to summarise then, completeness is a human decision, luckily for all of us, otherwise we wouldn't have a job anymore. Tools can help in reporting incompleteness, and verification planning is the key to being successful, knowing that you've tested everything that you said you were going to test. So that concludes this presentation. Thank you for listening, and goodbye.